Thank you, Madam Speaker. As I said before, it's Greek to most people, so I will forgive you. Um, Madam Speaker, fellow South Africans, every year with the release of crime statistics, the Western Cape emerges as the most violent and dangerous province in the country. Simultaneously, it, ha it has the lowest unemployment rate of all provinces. This is a strange paradox. Lower unemployment should lead to lower crime stats. It, yet gang Policing. Similarly, earlier this year in Johannesburg, Metro train driver Johan Birkus was grievously assaulted when a broken signal delayed his train. Last year, another driver was killed at Network Station, and earlier this year, the United National Transport Union refused to let its members work on the central line that serves the Cape Flats until the safety and that, their safety and that of the commuters can be assured after a guard was killed. This whilst price size falling apart. Our metros are not allowed to touch these rail systems because they are in the hands of the national government. In fact, provinces have few powers in terms of policing and rail transport, and they are also subject to uniform national policies on most social matters, such as education, health, and housing. Ironically, those are the matters that should be the most regionally focused of them all. These are issues that require politicians to be constantly on the ground, aware of all the smallest details in the smallest communities that affect the lives of our people. Provincial ministers are ideally placed for this, and therefore they deserve to have more autonomy on matters of policy. It is no secret that the DA is a federal party with a federalist policy. I offer no excuse for this, on the contrary. But this also does not mean that promises should function separate from the national context either. Ours is a policy of bringing accountability and government as close as possible to the people and making it work. It's a policy that the ANC fears because they know that if a DA provincial government was given the chance to run policing in this province, the murder rates in places such as Kayalicha would be much, much lower. They also know they also know that were our provinces and metros allowed to run the metro rail system, more job seekers will find opportunities thanks to our policy. More scholars who can't afford quality schools will be able to attend schools if a provincial alternative to the quintile system can be implemented. And state health care would be even better in provinces that are well run, leaving the national government to focus on problematic areas. It was, to be frank, a great disappointment to see how little attention the president paid to provinces in the State of the Nation address. It is because the provinces under this government play no real role in any matter of importance. Greater decentralization can make provinces the laboratories of democracy with encouraged sharing of different policies between them. We need now more than ever innovative ideas. Greater decentralization will also bring governance closer to the people, encourage diversity, lead to more stability and increase accountability where there is no longer an overlap in duties between the different spheres of government. Provinces that perform should not be feared, Madam Speaker. They should be supported, encouraged, and given more freedom. It does not take away from our national unity to grant it. At the next election, South Africans have a clear choice between two parties who stand squarely, squarely opposite each other on this matter. An ANC national government too afraid to hand over some of its powers, thereby reducing provincial governments where they function badly to little more than gravy trains on the one hand, or innovative provincial parliaments that move closer than ever to our people under this DA policy. I thank you.